obviously we're talking about multiplying fractions together. Okay, so if you had something like one half times three fifths, you'd multiply straight across, that'd be three over ten. Okay, or if you had two over seven and five pi over six, that'd be ten pi over forty-two. Um, or five pi over twenty-one. Um, the cross multiply gets mixed up with this uh, sometimes. Cross multiply is if you had something like uh, x or x over five equals twelve over thirty-two. That's silly one because that's the original thing. Oh, that's not what I wanted either. Okay. All right. Let's do thirty-one. There you go. Uh, the cross multiply would be you multiply across. Divide by 31, you solve that. That's cross. So it's when you're finding a variable, or I mean, you're finding the same. It's when two fractions, strictly fractions, like there can't be extra bits like plus two. That, that's not going to happen. Uh, two fractions equal to each other, then you cross multiply. Yeah, you're solving for some reason. You know, it's a cross multiply when two fractions with nothing unknown in them is just set equal to each other. Then there's not really much more. Test to see if these are equal by cross multiplying. 52 times 2 is 104, and 1 times 104 is 104, so they're equal. But I guess that's a long time past. Uh, we know how to simplify these fractions and see if they're equal. Um, here, though, like I don't really like cross multiply because uh, it kind of implies you can't understand what's happening here. Really, all we're doing is we're not just multiplying this by 31, we're really multiplying both sides by 31. On this side, 31 cancels, and we get 31x over here. We're also multiplying both sides by 5. This 5 cancels, we multiply this by 5, and we get 12 times 5 is 60. Really just like shortcutting the algebraic idea of doing the same thing on both sides. Okay. Make sense? Mm -hmm. right. So try, yeah. Be careful though, mix those up. I noticed when we're solving for like a missing angle, we have sine on top and then side length on bottom, whereas when we're searching for missing side length, it's side length on top and sine on bottom. Yep. So why? Like, what's the difference when you're doing this? Well, uh, just easier. So if you have a triangle that looks something like that, and um, we, we're going to solve for an angle, so maybe we've got and uh, one of these seven degrees. Uh, and, and so I guess this would have to be maybe. So this is three, this is five, this is 27, and we're going to solve for this angle right here. The reason for that is if the, the reason I'm going to put sine of, let's call it A, doesn't really matter what we call it, sine of A over 3 equals sine of 27 over 5 is... So that we can multiply by 3 and then... Yeah. yeah. So now we don't have a variable in the denominator that we have to mess around with. Uh, so the alternative, which is just as true, but then just not as more easy. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay, the, that's so the that just makes it easier. Yeah. Okay. And then if we were solving for a side length, then we would have the side length in the numerator and not to move that. So we just have what we're solving for on top. Yeah, okay. and then you know that's something we could do with <coughs> these are proportions when you have two fractions equal to each other. You can flip both the fractions over to your convenience. <coughs> other questions? I just kind of feel like there would normally be a question about like finding two triangles. Does that just go super smoothly and we get in trouble? And I'd like to look at that. Okay.
draw my general triangle like this, just so that I can make the, the visual part of it a little easier on myself. I'd like to start with my angle down here, which is 35 degrees. Um, so that's A, so side A is across from it, so 11, 14, and we get to work. Okay. So the thing that I suggested to you was, if you remember back to the, the animation or the, the illustration I had before, Sometimes this side, like all they tell us is it's that long. Okay. But sometimes a side length of, of 11 isn't long enough. Right. You can imagine like if, if this were 35 degrees and this were a million, right, if this side were a million, there's no way a side that's 11 would ever reach all the way down to this other side of the triangle. So sometimes the three pieces they give you are kind of uh, tricky and false. And there's no way that this would be long enough. And when that happens and you try to solve that angle down here, you just get an error in your calculator and that way you know that there's no triangle possible. Okay. So my advice was that you just start, solve for the thing that is uh, pretty clear to solve for and if it comes out, then it comes out and that's a triangle. And then ask yourself if there's a second triangle possible. Okay, so let's get started. We've got this angle is A, this side is A, and this side is B which means this angle is B, this is C, and this is C. So what are we going to solve for first? B, angle B. Angle B, okay, because that, that comes in a pair, and that's just one half of the pair that we don't know, and we know this. So, just like your question before, Connor, we're going to set up this equation with sine of B in the numerator. So 14 sine of 35. Then we'll solve for b. And we'll multiply by 14 on both sides. We've got sine of b equals 14 sine 35 over 11. Right, so we do all of that stuff and we find what that number is and how we're going to get b by itself. Okay, sine inverse of b is equal to sine. Inverse sine of that stuff. Right? Inverse sine. So while Connor works on that, ideal to do this because then there's no rounding involved. So 14 sine 35 over 11 is 0 0.73000. So that's inverse sine. Uh, that's a little hanging. Well, it's longer than that. So. 73 what? And then there's like just a bunch of zeros. So three zeros matters. Three zeros? Okay. So what's 73 is a pretty good approximation then. But it's not an approximation. No? No, wait. No, no. I was talking to her. She asked me about the room. Oh. <laughs> Are you in the rating? No, 46.88692837. Everybody get that? That's why I said that's not what I got. What you, what you, what you, what you, what you got. Uh, you got to take the inverse sign of that. 46 point? 46.886. Yeah. 886089. Yeah. Okay, so this could be 48.46.89. Well, that means that we can find this angle by making sure all the three angles add up to 180, which makes this angle how big? 98.11. Agreed? Everybody? Okay. Last bit of work here. We just got to solve for that side. We'll use the law of sines again. Solve for that side. We got to make room for the second triangle. That's why I mentioned that small one. Right. So C, the side C, or the sine of the angle C, which is I'll use this pair because it's more precise. 11 over the sine of 35. C is equal to 11 times the sine of 98.1. 18.9 So we did all that work and we found a triangle that exists or could exist if given these first three pieces of information. 35 degrees, 11, and 14. 35 degrees across from that is 11 and another side is 14. Okay. So 
since it is a, what kind of triangle? It is obtuse, but by, by kind, I mean like, uh, is it angle, 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 side, side, side? What kind of triangle is it? Oh, it's uh, angle, side, side. Yeah, angle, side, side. Then I'm going to write it in the reverse order. Side, side. Because <laughs> that's my official uh, duty as a, as a teacher. Why? To avoid my words. Uh, <laughs> OK. <laughs> uh, so now we ask ourselves, uh, since there is a triangle, it's a side-side angle, a strictly side-side angle is the only kind of uh, triangle we ask this question about. We found a triangle, will there be a second triangle, and how do we know whether there is or not? Is, this a, is there a second one, or is it the only one possible? Daniel? Um, well, wouldn't you see if, uh, hmm, would you subtract? One eighty minus one of the sides. Uh, I think you're looking to work it. Your your how do you find the second triangle once you know it exists? Is where you are. Um, okay, let's let's kind of recap what we've done so far. There's a second triangle. How do you know? Because there's. Okay, let's kind of recap what we've done so far. So we were given this side, this side, and this side. And here's the thing: maybe a no triangle is possible. What would make the triangle not possible is that this side would be too short. Right? We were given an angle that has to be that angle. And we were given this side that has to be that side. It was locked. This side was locked. There's no getting around. Or this angle was locked. There's no getting around that. And this other side is definitely needs to be the given length that they told us. Okay? But if this length is too short, it can't possibly make if this side were 11 and this side were a million, there's no way at that angle, at 35 degrees, that this side would reach down at being 11 and this is a million. Assuming the bottom line is flat. Well, it would have to be, well, I mean, we could turn it at an angle, but the thing is, this angle is definitely 35. Okay. That's, so whether or not it's flat, that angle still has to be 35. Okay. I mean, it's just easiest to draw it. So this could be too short. But we know it's not too short because we found a triangle with those three pieces. We found the other three pieces. It's possible. So now we have to ask ourselves, could we somehow make another triangle? Yeah, Daniel, I do know you can. Oh, the B sine A. Uh, you could do B sine A. You could do this times the sine of that, OK? And see if this is, well, B sine A would be the minimum length. It would be this length that would make a right triangle. If you did B times the sine of A, you'd be finding this side, this straight up and down side. Okay. And whatever that is, I'm sure that this is longer than that because it, it needs to be at least that long. Okay. But it's also short. It's short enough to come over here and fit right here. It's shorter than this. Remember we talked about we so talked about that? bigger than the height, but shorter than the height. Which is what this little h is less than a, which is yeah. So the thing about the b sine a is what that tells us is that our side that we're given this side right here is long enough. It if you do b sine a, you'll find it's shorter than eleven, which means that eleven is long enough to make a triangle. But also, not getting an error and finding all of this stuff tells us the same thing. Um, that's why my suggestion is just try it. If you get an error. That also tells you that uh, you don't have a triangle, no triangle is possible. Wait, if you don't get an error, it tells you that it's all working out fine. If you do get an error, it tells you that there's no triangle possible. Because the calculator does it all. Well, it, it helps. Um, but now that we know that a triangle is possible, and we observe that this, this 11, is shorter than 14, that means that it could fit right in here. So let me redraw this. Drawing our first triangle and trying to recreate that. So what we just found is, is a triangle that looks kind of like this. But the triangle we're going to find right now looks like this, where we swing this, this side of 11 over here and fit it in there. We know it can fit in there because it's long enough to reach from the top to the 
5 was i. But it's also shorter than 14, so it could uh, come down here and uh, meet this, this bottom side uh, in here. So we know this is 11, and we know this is 11, obviously, because we just saw it over there. You know how big that angle is? 46, 48. Uh, that's the angle in the other triangle that we just did, which means that also this is 46.89. So if this is 46.89, then how big is this angle right here? 180 minus 46. This whole thing from the straight line is 180 degrees. If we subtract this, we'll find this. Here. So 180 minus 46.89 gives us what? 133.1. 133.1. Uh, so that's how big this angle is right find out how big this angle is by making 35 plus 130, 133.1 plus this equal 180. That makes this what? 12? 12. 12. 12. And very similar to the last piece of work, except for this angle is going to be different. Like our last thing to find side C will look just like this, but this angle will be 11.9 instead of 98. Over, I guess we could just say this. C is going to be equal to 11 and the sine of 58.11 or of, uh, of a 11.9 uh, over the sine of 35. So that makes that side of this smaller, slimmer triangle, this obtuse triangle. Side side angle. Uh, if the triangle is possible, uh, and, uh, so the opposite side is the shorter side of the two that are given to you. a triangle that was all possible to get any errors, so we know that this triangle exists. We notice that this is 11, it's shorter than 14, so 11 is short enough to fit over here, and we find our second triangle. This is how we start that process. Find that angle by 180 minus this angle, which is the angle we found over here. Questions? So uh, let's name this kind of triangle. What kind of triangle is this? Well, we don't even know for sure if it's obtuse or acute because we don't know all the angles. It could be right. Could be. Yeah, I don't know. But by by the type of triangle, I mean angle, 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 angle side, 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 or side, 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 angle, side, side, angle, side. We try to group these together as tightly as possible to meet them in order. Side, angle, side. The, the basic naming. <laughs> Procedure would be never skip over anything more than one unknown. Okay. So side next thing right next to that side is an angle. Right next to that is a side. Clearly a side angle side. So on a side angle side, can you use the law of sines to solve for anything to start with? What could you solve for the law of sines? Why does it look like we can't use the law of sine? We cannot. Because, because we don't know what Okay, the pairs. The pairs of angles and opposite sides. This is the only angle we have. And if we only have one angle, there's no hope of finding these other two just by like subtracting from 180 or something. And uh, that's the only angle we have, and we don't have the opposite side. So we cannot use the law of sines. But we can use the law of cosines. 
Is there a lot of changes? Uh, if there is one, it never or hardly ever gets used. Because between the law sign and the law cosine, you can solve the triangle. You can separate angle angle angle. And this possibility is endless there. Okay, so the law cosines. Because uh, it makes you go, ah! No, because you can no matter what values. Any side y angle 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 makes you go, ah! So here comes the uh, like one version of the, the log cosines equation. And I'm just going to write it down and have you guys use it. And so the side B squared equals A squared plus C squared. So these are the other two sides, aside from the, the, the B sides. So the other two sides, you add their squares, and then subtract 2 times A times C. So again, the other two sides. This is starting to sound like. Now, the first part of it here, put it right in front of you. Okay, sort of, but not really. <laughs> Times the cosine of what uh, of an angle of uh, the angle across from this side, the cosine of B. So I want you to use that equation. That sounds way more complicated than the one before. It is more complicated. So we like to use a lot of sines if we can, but sometimes you got to use a lot of cosines to solve for a side or an angle, depending on the situation. This time we're going to solve for that side. So I got what you guys to work on uh, in a minute or so. Right. If I get in under 30 seconds, is there a prize? No. B wants to solve the entire journey? Uh, no, just find B. Just uh, plugged everything in, uh, A and C and the angle B. A, C, A, C, and the angle B. So you can see I did this all in, in one line here. Or I, I made a mistake and put in 1 instead of 11, so I can change that. So now we have that B squared is equal to 52.895. Um, and how are we going to figure out what B is? That's a scary thing. But it's fun. Don't get me wrong, it's, it's entertaining. We should do it all. Like, a lot. All the time. All right. Your time's backwards. So, 
notice in the, in the law of cosines, really the names of all these as sides and angles is not a lot important. If I call one angle A instead of C, then I just need to make sure that the side across me is called A and so on. So really what we have here is a way to solve for this side, and that side is always across from this angle. So I can, I could do uh, A squared, okay, but then these other two sides are going to be the, the other two sides besides A, so we'll do B squared plus C squared minus 2 times B times C times the cosine of A across from side A. And if we did it with C, then we could replace all the other things. Just the variables don't matter as long as they're just names. Triangles, the only thing that matters is that an angle is across from the symbol of the inside. A is across from A, B is across from B, and so on. We can use theta pi and E. Sure, good. That would be a different little uh, confusing thing. Because pi and E, that would have to assign to that one. Um, okay, so B is 7.27. That's the length of this side. So, how would you proceed from there? What would be your now you can use the law of sides. Now you can use the law of sides because you have a pair of an angle and a side. So, if they give you three things, you only need to use the law of cosine and the maximum once. Yes. And then your life will decide. And then your life is back to being as good as it was when you were using the law of sines, however good that might have been for you. You want us to solve the rest of this journey? Yes. Here's what I want you to do, though, and I'll tell you why in the next example. Use it, because you can solve for C or A. It's up to you, right? Both. So let's solve for A, not C. Solve for A. Solve for A, not C. When you're done with A, can you do C? Yes, then do C. That's the order that I'm going to tell you to do it in. And I'll use the next example to show you why. Okay, so if that's 57.79, then what's our last angle? 
just successfully use the log cosines to solve the triangle. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to show you an example. I'm going to lead you to failure, and then I'm going to show you why. Uh, what I mean, there, there's in the law of sines. If you get an error on your calculator, that tells you like something's up. Okay. With the law of cosines, it's not that there's no triangle possible. That doesn't happen. That would only happen with having the side side in strictly side side in. Why? Why? Uh, oh, damn it. Yeah. It's the only case where that, that other side could like just kind of swing and, and possibly not be long enough. But there's no way that So it's like a triangle for broken up. Yeah. It uh, maybe maybe it meets up and maybe it doesn't. In this one, if I give you a side angle side, there definitely has to be a triangle. There ha definitely has to be an like an end to this side and an end to this side. And some, some line of some length has got to reach from there to there. It's got to be possible. With a side, 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 definitely can make a triangle, a triangle out of any three sides you want. There can be any three that you want. So there's not any way to give you that information in such a way that it's not possible. Definitely possible. Side, side angle is that unique case where if I give you this side and this side, at this angle, I have given you three pieces of information. <coughs> I've given you three pieces of information to give you that angle, give you that side, give you that side, but maybe I told you a side that couldn't possibly reach down to this other side. At which point the triangle would go right. And if it reached in the right match. Yeah. Exactly. But here, for the, the law of cosines, any combination of information I give to you is going to definitely make a triangle. Okay. So are there imaginary triangles that reach that far? We're going to start here. We have the side, side, side. Okay, so we don't have any angles. Right. So let's just go in the angle that, that leads down the path of failure, and then I'll show you, uh, you know, what's, what happened. Why, why was that a, a bad idea? Do I get notice points if I don't fail? Uh, no, because if, if you don't fail, you didn't follow my instructions. Follow my instructions first. We're going to solve for, let's just solve for A. Okay, that's just what I'm going to say we solve for. We're going to use the law of cosines to do it. So we're going to use the version of the equation that has the angle A in it, right? which means if you look at the equation like here, this involves the angle B, this involves the angle A, and so it would involve, you know, on this side it would be the, the side that's across from angle A. Cosine of A, that's minus 2. So this is going to be B and C right here. And that B squared plus C squared, and that's going to be equal to A squared. So in this case, if this is the guy that you don't know, you're going to solve for that. I want you to work on that. It's a little bit challenging. I want you to have practice with it. All right. I'm going to show you my work. Um, so just plug everything in. A, B, and C. Uh, 12 squared, 27 squared, 20 squared, minus 22 squared, minus 20. I just subtract 27 squared and 20 squared from both sides. So that's what I have on this side. And now this side is just negative 2 times 27 times 20 times cosine of A. And this is all multiplied by cosine of A, so I divide by all that stuff, divide on both sides. And that'll be the cosine of A will be equal to this. So I'll take the inverse cosine of all of that, and that'll give me A. So what do we get? We You could also just take 27 squared plus 20 squared, and get that number, and then find what this number is, minus whatever that big number is, times times a. I just tried to show all my steps. Sometimes the answer could be wrong and you wouldn't even notice it. Yeah. 
Not this one. This one's fine. I can assure you of that. Unless you're wrong too. Well, I'm not wrong. That's How silly. How do we know that you're not wrong? That's a silly idea. <laughs> Twenty four point two one. I've divided by the cosine, I divide the cosine theta instead of all the rest of the actual numbers. So I got 12 squared over the cosine. So you know what you did wrong? Yeah, and then I multiplied by 1 over 144 to get rid of that. Apparently that was a completely different answer. Okay, so. as, long as, you, as long as you can spot your mistake and correct it, I'll be good. Right. Anybody else getting something different and confused as to why? Now we have found this angle A is about 24.21 degrees. Now what? What's that? Find B and C. Find B and C? What are we going to use to say we're going to solve for B? What would we use? The law of sine. The law of sine, because we have now an angle and its opposite side. So this is the part that we're going to do wrong. And, uh, and then I'll explain why it's wrong. We're going to find that angle, and then we'll easily find this other angle real quick, and then you'll see something's wrong, and I'll tell you why we got that wrong. Okay, so solve for B using the law of sines. That's what we're going to do right now. Sine of B over 27. This, this, uh, angle, which was previously unknown, over 27. Sine of 24.21 over 12. Solve for B, we get 67.32. Anybody else 67.32? I got 67 for the green side. Probably because with all these decimals and rounding, if you are not rounding to the same number of decimal places that I'm rounding to, then we'll get different answers. Right. I'm rounding to 2. And sometimes I'm not even rounding that much. Sometimes I'm using like the big decimal of my calculator to use it. And we use that in the calculator. So that's why we get maybe a hundredth of a degree off. Which is even unless the signs are really weird. Yeah. Then what's that? Um, okay, so that's sixty seven point three two. So can someone quickly tell me how big this angle is? Eighty eight point four seven. Eighty eight point four seven. Now, if we're not, you know, investigating too much into this triangle, it seems like we did everything right. We got all the angles and sides and everything. But can anybody look at that triangle and tell me what's wrong with it? Okay. Exactly. The, you got 88.47. Or no, you said the hypotenuse. So 27, the hypotenuse, is across from an angle that's not the biggest angle, which it should be. Here's the biggest angle. It's across from... Mm -hmm. Not the longest side. That is not okay. Right. Should be upset about that. Mm -hmm. So what happened? The world ended. Right. Here is what happened. Everyone could go back and fix it. It was this, right here. This is what I said. Uh, right. That was the path that led to failure. Solving for B instead of C. 
or sorry, sol solving for, did I say B? Uh, yes, solving for B instead of C was uh, the issue. Using the law of science to solve for B was the problem, okay? And here is where the problem came, came in, right? Here, to find this, we took uh, B equal to, and we took the inverse sign of whatever that was, right? Whatever that turns out to be. Anybody have that? Like that decimal approximation? No? I'll do it real quick if you don't have it. Maybe try to take the inverse sign of something, the inverse sign is a function always, remember how we talked about this, how it always gives its outputs from a certain part of the unit circle? Like when I ask it what angle has a sign of 0 0.923, it always tells me an angle from negative 90 to 90. Okay. The thing that happened was this angle is supposed to be bigger than 90, obtuse which the inverse sign will never say, right? When I say the inverse sign, it'll never say obtuse. It'll always say acute. It'll tell you the acute angle that has a sign of 0.923, which is 67.32, but it won't give you the obtuse angle. Because it has to pick one or the other. Yeah. And whoever because they both have it, they both have a sign of 0.923, and remember, we, or, yeah, 23, and remember how we talked about a couple classes ago, how it will always pick the the angle between 0 and 90. So it's like the square root of 2, they yeah. do. The square root of 4, they, have, they just give you 2 because pick one. Right. And the calculator just it can't give you two things, it just gives you one thing. Well, it gives you 2 and 4, 2, negative 2. Well, that's what I Okay, so that's, that's, that's the explanation there. When you take the inverse sign, it's always going to come from here for things that have positive uh, signs. So, now what if we had solved for this angle? If, we, if this angle is supposed to be obtuse, which I'm just telling you that, it, that it's supposed to be, then will this, side be up, this angle be obtuse? No, it would be no. acute. It would be acute. So if we use the law of sines to solve for that angle, then there wouldn't have been any problems. Okay? So here's a lesson we learned. Now, we always start with the smallest angle and work up? Well, I guess it depends on how you look at it. Let me, let me uh, never use the law of sines on the Never use the law of sines on a possibly, because we can't know that it's obtuse before yeah, we start, possibly. possibly obtuse angle, or not on it, um, to find, to find a possibly obtuse angle. Okay. So we could have solved this problem by just not trying to find this. By going to the other one first. Let's go to this one first. We should have solved this one first. How do we know this could be obtuse? We don't know that it is, but how do we know that it could be? Well, only possible obtuse angle would be across from the hypotenuse. So we look across from the hypotenuse, we never use the law of sines to solve for it. Don't use the law of sines across the hypotenuse, pretty much. What if they across from the hypotenuse? To solve for the angle across from the hypotenuse. What if they give me this? So if they give you the angle across from the hypotenuse? If they do that, then we don't have a problem, right? If there is an obtuse angle, it will be across the hypotenuse. If they give us the angle across the hypotenuse and it's obtuse, it will not, will not have a problem. Yeah. So, as a general rule, that will always uh, save you. Never use the law of sides to solve for a possibly obtuse angle. Okay. Which means, uh, you know, another way to, to avoid that would be at the very beginning, instead of solving for A, you're going to solve for B. With the law of cosines, when I take the inverse cosine to find A, Remember, the inverse cosine comes from these angles. Well, that includes from 0 to 90 and all the obtuse angles. So that would work too. Okay. So use law of cosines to find possibly obtuse angles. That's another way to look at it. Okay. You can look at it this way, you can look at the way you just said, use law of cosines to, to, to find a possibly obtuse angle. Yeah. Or just start with the smallest angle and work on it. Um,
it, and so in that way, it guarantees that you won't use the law of sines to solve for an obtuse angle. So now, sir, now I'm going to give you a uh, problem that you might possibly use on. Have you do it on your own? Are you yes. sure that that doesn't happen? Let's see what happens. Triangle. I want you to just solve this. So you clearly have to find all three angles and uh, just make sure you don't break that rule that this is that. So, how was your weekend, sir? It's good. Why do you? You can label them however you want. It doesn't really matter, right? So that's something I left up to you.
Um, I thought I could solve any of them beside with a lot of cosines. It's just a lot more work. Um, no, we can't. The ones that we use lot of sines for, we can't use lot of cosines. I mean, well, we can solve solve any of them with lot of cosines. Without then you can't use a lot of cosines on ones that you would use lot of sines on. Why not? Um, well, here's an example of one that you'd use a lot of. A lot of. That's delicious. Exponents. Here, here, A2. A lot of sines. You could use the law of sines to solve this, but you're not going to be able to use the law of cosines because let's say we call this b, call this b, c. Uh, so we fill in um, b squared. Because you can either solve for one side or one angle, but then you would need to know. Uh, Let's say we're going to solve for A then, right? Is that what you're thinking? Okay. Okay, solve for A. A squared, don't know what A is, equals 10 squared plus 5 squared minus 2 times 10 times 5 times the cosine of what? Of A. Which we don't have, which so it's impossible to solve. Yeah. And it would be pointless to solve for B because we don't know what B is. Yeah. That would just be kind of. And then if we did something like, um, okay, so let's say we use the cosine of B, cosine of uh, B, which is 37. Okay, so that means this is going to be A and C, which I don't have A, so it would be A times 5. Okay, we're going to subtract, oh, that's going to be 2. Um, this is going to be um, A squared uh, plus 5 squared, and that'll equal 10 squared. 10 squared equal, so then we have this a squared and this a, which I guess we could use the quadratic formula to solve for. But it'd be so much more work compared to yeah. small so, so, so we, we can, can use right. all the cosines to solve any triangle, except um, for angle, 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 which kind of sucks. That makes you go, ah, but. Yep. Uh, I guess you could. I guess you could use a lot of cosines to solve for side a. Well, what a nightmare. <laughs> if I had to. When you get back to pregnant, by you solve this triangle, would you only use a lot of cosines? It's just a little slow. I don't need to do that. Uh, we have better computers. Yeah, the little yeah. red circle is flashed. Yeah. Yeah. That means it's recording. Oh, yeah, I mean, Hi. You've been to. Okay, uh, anyway, let's put it all together. If we have an angle, we know an angle and its opposite side. And its opposite side. And then we'll use the law of sines. Sine A over A equals So if we can't really lost it, we throw it in the lock. Sure. Whatever well, it's you okay. Just always remember, however you write the equation, these are just Last thing to keep in mind if you don't want to avoid, or if you do want to avoid like bad badness, what do we remember to do? Do 
not use a lot of signs on a fossil leaf are too stable. Never use a uh, of signs to solve for possibly obtuse. When in doubt, lock it out. Any questions? Mm -hmm.